So you've heard me do my rant about how graphing, pretty nice, way too much work. What we're going to see is if we can look at one final graph and then move into doing these algebraically and intuitively rather than having to waste time drawing graphs. So here's a specific example. What kind of a graph is this? What am I graphing on the x axis, on the y axis, sorry? Look, find the variable. Speed, velocity, speed in this case. Uh, what am I graphing on the x axis? What's it almost always been so far this year? Time. We're really interested in time. And this one, I was a bit more accurate in creating this. So here is a very specific example. There's all sorts of other symbols on here as well, but hey, the line we're talking about is that one there, right? Let's answer some questions, and I think, Spence, this might also help you for the sheet that I gave out a little yesterday. Uh, so this shows the uniform acceleration. Oh, is there an acceleration? What kind of a graph is this? What are we graphing on the y-axis? Speed and time. Where does acceleration show up on a speed versus time or velocity versus time graph? The slope. Yeah, the slope. Now, do we have a positive slope? a negative slope, or horizontal line, a slope of zero? Positive. So do we have a positive acceleration, a negative acceleration, or no acceleration, constant speed? Because that's the same question I just, okay? So there is an acceleration. If it was no acceleration on a velocity time graph, it'd be a horizontal line. Okay. What is the acceleration of the object? How can I find the acceleration? It's going to be the slope. Slope is what over what? The little acronym, the little phrase that we have. Slope is what over what? Ra OK, let's write that. In your homework, if you're finding a slope and you don't write that, I'm good with that. But you notice in my notes, I always want to write down. So when I'm studying, I remember what the heck I did. What's the rise? OK, ready, Spencer? I'm going to pick on you again. How high are we right here at the top? How high are we right here at the bottom? What's the rise? Yeah, a little easier than the, the 91 point. Yeah, OK. 8 over. Oh, and we know positive, so I don't need to worry about putting a negative in front. What's the run? OK, now i got to be a little more careful. Well, I started, it looks like I started at 0. And it looks like I finished at, is that 0.8? I'm going to double check because the typing isn't quite lined up. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, at 0.8. So what's my run from 0 to 0 0.8? 0 0.8. Which is what? I think 10, right? I mean, 80 divided by 8 is 10. 8 divided by 0.8 is 10. I can do math in my head. 10 what? Units. What did we just find? What did you tell me the slope of a velocity time graph was? Acceleration. What are the units for acceleration? Meters per second squared. And again, remember, if you know the units, it also actually helps you figure out what the slope was. Because the slope was rise, which is meters per second, if you look at my y-axis, over run, which is seconds. You can see it's meters per second per second. It is meters per second squared. I, so I said to you guys last class, you can memorize that, and probably you will, because it's the most common graph in Physics 11. But certainly in Physics 12, nobody memorizes all 50 or 60 graphs. They just memorize that trick of it's the slope, divide the units, and you can usually figure it out because you have to memorize the units anyhow, and you naturally do because you use them so often. Hey, Spence, what's B want me to find? Oh, y equals mx plus b. Except I'm not going to write a y. What's sitting on my y-axis as a variable? That's meant to be a really easy question, folks. There shouldn't be a moment of silence. Huh? A v equals, leave a space, oh no, m is the slope. What's the slope? 10. What's sitting on my x-axis as a variable? Plus, ooh, I think we can do this in our heads. What's the y-intercept? That. Now, for some reason, don't ask me why, for this particular graph, 
velocity equals acceleration times time plus, oh, by the way, what's that two? You know what, underneath this, let's write, this is velocity and you guys told me this was acceleration. How about A for acceleration? T is time plus, what's that, what's that two? What does it mean at time zero? Starting point, starting location, is that what's on the y-axis? You're very close, but I don't think it's starting location. What's on the y-axis? Starting what? Ta yeah, yeah? Starting speed. It means we didn't start at rest. In fact, we have a fancy word for that. Instead of starting, we have a word that begins with letter I. Now, if that V is V initial, what would the left hand V be then? Not my initial velocity. What's the opposite of initial? You guys learned a little bit of this in science, huh? Final. Final. This is going to be one of our big equations. V, except, except for some reason, it's traditional to write it this way. VF equals VI plus AT. Is that the same equation? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Why is it traditional to write it that way? To make the unit. And it, don't worry about it. You don't need to memorize this one. Almost all of you will because we'll be using this, I kid you not, about 500 times in the next month and a half, and you'll get sick of looking it up. But it is on your formula sheet. It's one of the biggies. In fact, most of the rest of this unit is going to come from that notion and one other notion. So next page over. By the definition of constant acceleration, acceleration is the velocity change per second, fair enough. Total velocity change is blah, blah, blah. You know what? From the graph, Kyle, we have just derived one of the fundamental equations of what's called kinematics, which is the study of things that move. V final equals V initial plus AT. Now that says final speed equals initial speed plus acceleration times time. What if I wanted to make this a velocity equation? How do I show velocity instead of speed? What's the difference between velocity and speed? Oh, Danielle's doing a little, little she's giving me the, like a little gangline symbol or something. No, no, you're, oh, you're telling me to draw a little arrow. Got you. Vector, velocity, vector, and vector times a scalar. So there's my one size fits all. Actually, Justin, that's four equations, not one. Because how many variables are there in here? Count with me, Justin. Loudly. You already did the one. And? And? As far as I'm concerned, I can give you any three, find the fourth. And what I'm going to show you, which is better than any triangle, in fact, a triangle wouldn't work for this equation because there's a plus sign. One of the things over the next couple of weeks I'm going to show you is how to rewrite these in your head algebraically. Get whatever variable you want by itself. Instead of memorizing four different equations, I'll teach you how to derive four different equations. And it's a much better way to go. It's going to seem a little scary, a little weird at first. Trust me. I've taught far, uh, far different kids than you, and it had success. So I said, note, you can see this from the equation on the previous page. Now, we'd also like to talk about distance or displacement. To find the distance or the displacement, we can't use d equals vt, because this is only true when you're not accelerating. We want one size fits all. We want Devon one that'll also handle when you press the gas pedal down or press the brakes. So we did say this, V average equals distance over time. I want to get the distance by itself. What else is on the same side as the distance? What variable? Meant to be really obvious. T? Where is the T? What's it doing to the distance? Is it adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? How would I? move it over. What's the opposite? So on this side, if I'm dividing by t, what's that the same as doing on this side? Devin, by t. In other words, oh, by the way, Devin, how many variables does this equation have? How many equations is it really? Three. I'm not going to memorize all of them. 
going to give you one of them. Uh, let's get the D by itself. So you're telling me that must also be true? It is. But now what I really want to talk about is V average, this guy. How do you find an average? Hmm. Hmm. Noah, let's suppose you have 20 bucks. I've got 40 bucks. What do we average between us? Okay, I'll make easier numbers. Let's suppose Noah has 10 bucks. I got 20 bucks. Yeah, I got more money than Noah. What do we average between us? What? 15. Okay, don't write this down. We're going to do a little thought experiment. So don't write this down. What if uh, Noah had 20 bucks and I had 40 bucks? What do we average between us? Huh? What if Noah had 25 bucks and I had 26 bucks? What do we average between us? How do you find an average mathematically? What mathematical operation can I do to a 10 and a 20 that gives me 15 as an answer? I know right now you guys are finding halfway between them, but I need something better than that. What mathematical operation can I do with a 20 and a 40 that'll give me 30 as an answer? Colin. Which in this case, more specifically, is two. Did you hear him? He said, if you want to find the average, it's add them up, divide by two. It's add them up, divide by two. That's what we were doing. You were doing it intuitively, but that's the average. OK. Write this down. The average is, how did you say I found an average, Colin? Add them up and divide by? So you know what? It's going to have that. What are we adding up? Two velocities. Which two velocities? The same two velocities that appeared in the earlier equation. What were the two velocities that appeared in the earlier equation? How did I label them? Is that OK, Cam? So you know what? Equation number two, if I want to find a displacement, and it's a vector. By the way, this will also work for distance. If it works for vectors, it'll work for scalars, but it doesn't always go the other way around, so I'm deriving the vector equations. It's equal to v average times t. Ah, no, 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 no. It's equal to vi plus vf over 2 times t. Ooh, except Riley, that's a scalar equation. Vector, vector, vector. Do I put a vector symbol over time? No, scalar. In other words, this will work if we include directions and negatives and positives. It'll still work. Is that equation on your yellow formula sheet? Well, yes and no. By the way, what we're going to be looking at is where are we? this row right here. Okay, We've already derived the first one, vf equals vi plus at. The second one is that equation, except how did I type it up on the formula sheet? Did I put a little divided by 2? No. Nope. Jordan, what did I put instead? Oh, is dividing by 2 the same as timesing by a half? Yes, it is. So on your formula sheet, it looks like this. D displacement equals 1 half VI plus VF. Is that what it says on your formula sheet? Or is it F plus I? Is it VI plus VF or is it VF plus VI? V I plus V I doesn't adding it, it really doesn't matter. But so that's the same equation. Uh, 
I like this one because it's easier to rewrite. And we will practice that. But it's the same equation. So now we have a way, Kyle, to relate if you have changing velocities, I can now find out how far you've gone. In other words, I'm now allowing you to press the gas or hit the brakes. Cool. Next page. I was planning on walking through this lovely little graph thingy. Uh, you know what? It's kind of cool, but I'm trying to break away from the charts, and I'm trying to break away from the graphs. So instead, we're going to go to another distance equation. Thomas, you going to make it? Yeah. You sure? OK. We're going to get four kinematics equations today, and we're going to spend the next month using them in ways you can't imagine. The distance equation. I thought we just did the distance equation, the better distance equation. Uh, I should make a little note. This year, and in Physics 12, whenever we talk about acceleration, we're talking about uniform or unchanging acceleration. We're not going to let you, we're going to let you press the gas, but we're not going to let you move the gas pedal so that you're speeding up faster and faster. That you really need calculus for. Just make it a nerd point. So, you ready? If we have uniform acceleration, we can find average speed, the average, which is written by Colin. What was the equation that you came up with? How do we find the average? What's Colin's law? Hey, we'll even name it that. Colin's law. You got something named after you. No, it's not Adam up. There was more to it than that. More specific in this case. Okay. So Collins' law, the V average equation, he said, hey, people, add them up and divide by two. We'll even put that in a box. OK? Uh, by the way, Colin, you may notice this year, because we're having uniform acceleration, our acceleration is smooth, you may notice that the average acceleration always occurs halfway between the final and the initial. The same way as when I was doing my money example, you guys were just finding halfway between how much money Noah had and how much money I had. Yeah, that's the average. But that's only because we're doing uniform acceleration. If you take first year physics in university, that won't be the case. Distance is defined as average, yeah, I got to turn the page now. Average speed times time. I already said that. We gave you this equation in the last big box. And this is the first equation that I gave you, VF equals VI plus AT. What's VF equal to? Oscar, can you read it to me? What's VF equal to? Look up. What's VF equal to? Uh, initial. Just VI plus AT. What's VF equal to? VI plus AT. One more time. What's VF equal to? VI plus AT. Wherever I see a VF, what can I replace it with? VI plus AT. When I see a VF, what's that the same as? And I'm making a point. VI plus AT. Is there a VF right there? Yeah. What can I replace it with? VI plus AT. Ooh. Okay, do you okay with that? Thumbs up so far? Now we're going to do a little algebra. Oscar, you're doing so well. Can you read to me what's inside the bracket? VI plus AT plus VF. Yeah. Read it again now. VI plus AT plus VI. Did you say VI twice? Are those like terms? We can gather like terms. What's 1VI plus 1VI? What's 1x plus 1x? 2x, what's 1vi plus 1vi? So I can actually write this as 2vi's and an at 
all over two, and a little T tucked there. By the way, what I'm showing you right now, Max, is how to derive this new equation. You don't need to know that, but I'm a nerd. I always show it. What you're going to need to know is whatever I put in a great big box. So, so far, I think I put one, two equations in a big box. You're going to end up with four in a big box, and they're on your formula sheet. Oh, hey, guys. Let's multiply that in. Like Mr. Rocca calls it front door bomber or foil or just whatever you want to call it. I think I can actually say, you know what? This is going to be 2 VIT plus AT. Oh, what's T times T? How do I write that? Squared. And this is all over 2. Oh, and again, Justin, vector, vector. Have I done anything weird or new? I've done some clever algebra so far, Madison. What's on the bottom of this fraction? A 2. Am I dividing everything by 2? Then you know what? I'm going to split this fraction up. I'm going to write 2 vi t over 2 plus a t squared over 2. Vector, vector, vector. By the way, you'll notice often what I do, I write the equation, and then afterwards I add the vector signs. That's kind of like my check. Better make sure I don't forget those. Just a habit. Why did I do that? Look at the first fraction. What number is on the top in the front? 2. What's on the bottom? Hey, what's 2 divided by 2? They cancel. And this gives us equation number 3. Ready? In the box. D equals... Oscar, you've been doing so good. We're going to keep going with you. Look up, look up, look up. Read the 2's canceled. Read those 2. And that's how we say it. You can say times if you want to, but if you say V, oh, you're doing it in black, Mr. Duick. If you say V-I-T, I'll know that you mean that. Oh, what comes after that? What's sitting uh, right there? Plus? A-T. Not A-T. A-T what? Square. Over? Sure. Traditionally, oh, Jordan, do you remember dividing by 2, what's that the same as multiplying by? What did you say a few minutes ago? Do you remember? Traditionally, it's written this way, a half a t squared. D equals v i t plus a half a t squared. D equals v i t plus a half a t squared. Who's in grade 12? See the t squared? Turns out this is a parabola, which is one of the reasons you study it so much in Math 11. The parabola shows up everywhere. Have you got, uh, who's in Math 11? Have you guys done the parabola yet or not? You guys have done the, okay. If you're wondering why we, in math we look at the parabola, it shows up all over the place, including here. That's equation number three. There's a fourth one, and you know what? I forgot to draw a box, so let's do this. This is equation four. I'm not going to derive this one. This one, yep. Yeah. For the final jet equation, doesn't the AT squared have to be a Nope, because there's no plus sign. If there was a plus sign right there, I'd need to have it in brackets. Because it's times, 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 A times B times C is the same as C times B. Two times three times four in your head. Two times three times four. Two times four times three. 3 times 4 times 2. When you're timesing, does the order matter? Do we need brackets to somehow distinguish order? Nope. Is that okay? Uh, timesing and adding, order doesn't matter. Dividing and subtracting, yeah. 
uh, as I was saying, uh, equation number four, we derive actually in about three months very easily, but I'm not going to derive it now. Here's the fourth equation. Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2AD. And I think you should have these all in a row on the same line in your formula sheet. Second line of the acceleration chunk. Yes? Okay. So do you need to memorize them, Ange? No. Do you need to use them? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, ah, squared, 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 squared. Ah. By the way, guess what the most common mistake on that equation that kids are sloppy? The squares. My physics 12s as well. It's a handy equation, but time and time again, they're so proud of finding it, they're so proud of getting it by its, and they forget the squared. So here they are. I put them in a box. They aren't officially numbered. And if I ask you what the equation is, I'm going to say, don't tell me equation three. One way to help you become for, more familiar with them is just to read them aloud. So whenever I say, hey, I'm looking for an equation, read me the equation. How do we do this? You ready? You got them? You got your calculators handy? You got your brains revved up? Here we go. To solve a problem, remember DFIC, list your data and then find an equation. Example two says this. An object starts at rest. You know what? All of us underline the word at rest. That's important. And travels 12 meters over the next three seconds while accelerating constantly. Find A, the acceleration of the object, and B, the final speed of the object. Before I do anything, I'm going to list what they gave me. What have they told me? What does that at rest tell me? Sorry? Start at what? I want in terms of distance or acceleration or time or velocity. Again, you've given me units. I want the word distance or the word time or the word acceleration or the word velocity. Which one? There's two of them, initial or final. This tells me this. And I think this is what you were thinking, Oscar, but you just didn't know how to voice it. What else do I see? 12? What else do I see? OK. Part A, what do they want me to find? Usually that's pretty easy to figure out. This isn't like math word problems where it's awkward. Usually in physics, you can tell what they want you to find. What do they want you to find, Thomas, in part A? I write down A equals question mark. That's my shorthand notation for I know what they asked me to find. Now, why am I big on this? A couple of reasons. First of all, Max, my question's no longer blank. I feel better, and I really haven't had to do that much thinking. A little bit, I had to get the at rest. Fair enough. But I'm more relaxed. Also, though, I'm looking for an equation. Which equation? It has to have v initial, d time, and acceleration in it, and it can't have v final. Find me out of those four which equation that is. You need to practice and you need to do this. So you're either looking at the four that are above or on your formula sheet. Out of those four, which equation has v initial in it? D in it, time in it, A in it, but no VF. Max, read it to me. As, as I said, I don't want the number, I want the equation. Read it to me. VI. VI Good. I will give you a half, usually I make these worth two marks. I would give you a half mark for writing that. Because to me, one of the skills is, hey, I know what I'm supposed to use to find it. So write that down. You wrote that down already? Oh, OK. 
Are any of these zeros? Are any of these zeros? What? The initial. The initial. So you're saying this right here is a zero? What's zero times 10? What's zero times a million? What's zero times gajillion? What's zero times T? Don't pause on me. I, come on. We had to go. What's zero times 10? What's zero times a million? What's zero times a gazillion? What's zero times a... What's zero times T? I can cross that one. And I can modify that equation to get this now. Okay with that? Zero, by the way, you're going to find whenever you have zeros, they'll bring a smile to your face because almost always nice stuff happens. So now, really, this equation is and what can I put in front? A one half. Half a t squared. Yeah, something's beeping out there, stopwatches or something, I don't know. Justin, you okay with that so far? What am I trying to find? Final speed? That's what I'm trying to find? Ah, how do I know? Did you figure out how we can tell? Because we wrote it down. Because, yeah, we've done some math. We, we've done some thinking. We forgot. What am I trying to find? Say it again. You're right. What variable is that? Right there. See it? See it? I want to get it by itself. What else is on this side? A 1, a 2, and a t squared. Let's tackle them one at a time. What's the 1 doing to the a? Is it adding? How do I know? If it was adding, what would you see between them? Plus. Is it subtracting? No. How do I know? No. OK. Timesing? So timesing by 1, how would I move that over? What's the opposite of timesing by 1? Now, does dividing by 1 change your answer at all? So, you know what? Although I've looked at the 1 in future, I'm going to ignore the 1. What's this 2 doing? Adding, subtracting, multiplying? Or do Is it adding or subtracting? No. Is it on the top or on the bottom? So is it timesing or is it dividing? What's the opposite of dividing by 2? So I'm going to have this. The D is sitting there already on the left, yes? A 2 is going to appear over on this side. Here's my equal sign. With me, Kyle? 2, pop. What did you say we're trying to get by itself, Justin? A. We've taken care of, we've ignored the 1. We've taken care of the 2. What else is on this side? I gotta be fussy, not just a t, a t squared. What's happening between the a and the t, Justin? Adding? How do I know? Okay. Subtracting? No. How do I know? No. What, what mathematical operation is happening over here? What's the opposite of timesing by t squared? How could I move it over? What we've just done, Oscar, is derived a new equation. Now you can memorize that, I get, but I'm, I'm going to tell you there's like 70 permutations of these. Don't. Now if you're uncomfortable with what we just did, patience. I will gradually ease you into this. In fact, I'm hopeful within about two weeks most of you will glance at that first line where I crossed it out in red and go straight to this final line in your head showing no steps. And I think that's great. It's a wonderful shortcut. But it turns out, Noah. As the new physics equation, one way to find the acceleration is to go 2 times the distance divided by t squared. Not on your formula sheet. I don't need to put it on my formula sheet. It comes out of the one that they gave me. Now, uh, the D stood for list your data. F stood for find a formula. We have. I stands for insert the numbers. There's a 2. What's D? You shouldn't have to think too hard. We listed everything. Now it's plug and chug. 12 over, what's t? 3, and what had I better not forget? Squared, yeah, it's good. Now go to your calculator. 
try and figure out how to type that in on your calculator. I'm going to pause for a second, then I'm going to go to mine. Actually, I should be able to do this in my head. It's 24 divided by 9, which is going to be the same as 8 divided by 3, which is going to be, I'm going to guess, uh, 2.6666666. Is that right? Yeah. I can do math in my head. If you didn't get that, so you go to, to oh, by the way, on the top call, because you were asking about brackets, are we multiplying on the top? So we don't have to be too fussy with brackets. We would if there was a plus sign. Are we dividing on the bottom? How many numbers are on the bottom? Meant to be really obvious. How many terms are on the bottom? Say one. If we had more than one, we would need to put the bottom in brackets because our calculators are stupid. But we'll talk about that. So you would go 2 times 12 divided by 3. Use your x squared button because you got one. Uh, how many sig figs? Well, how many sig figs did they give me for the distance? Not two. Three. How many sig figs did they give me for the uh, time? Three. How many sig figs should I go with in my answer? 2.5. Six, seven. Units. Units. What did we find? Acceleration. What are the units? This is why it's worth memorizing what goes with what for the meters per second squared. Do we get a positive answer or a negative answer? Stop. I'm going to ask you the same question differently. Are we speeding up or slowing down? How do you know? Positive answer. No graph required. I can tell you that. Riley, what's B want me to find? Oh, VF? Okay, so Riley, now I'm looking for an equation that has VF in it for sure, because I need that, and then VI, DT. It can have A, although because I calculated A, I might have gotten this wrong. I might want to hedge my bet and find an equation that doesn't have an A in it. Ah, you know what? I'll use the A too, if necessary. Can you find me an equation that's got to have VF that also has maybe uh, D, T, A, and VI? There's several. Which one? Do you guys see what we're do you guys understand what we're doing, right? You're looking at those four, and it's a process of elimination. So uh, I think there's one that has no VF, right? I can't use that one. In fact, this one here has no VF, won't help me at all. Read it to me. Uh, you forgot to read the left hand side of the equation. The whole thing. Ah, okay. V I plus V F divided by two. By the way, you said then T, but actually mathematically what's going on right there? Adding? So oh times T. Okay. Does that work? Yep. You could also have gone with The only reason I might hesitate is uh, I'd be using the A that I calculated from part A, and if I got A wrong, I'll get B wrong. Although, well, come back to that in a second. OK. <sighs> what am I trying to get by itself? Spence? V final. See it there? See it there? See it there? I see it ding, 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 in brackets right here. Right? Yeah. First, I think I'm going to have to move the stuff out of the brackets. I'm going to have to take care of this T and this 2. What's the T doing? How would I move it over? What's the 2 doing? How would I move it over? So if I hear you, the D stays where it is. You're telling me a 2 there. Yep. And on the bottom, 
And on the right hand side, that's not on your formula sheet. Don't bother. I'm not going to memorize it. I can derive it. What did you say we're trying to find? The VF. Oh, what else is on the same side still as the VF? The VI. What's the VI doing to the VF? Uh, How would I move the VI over? So if I hear you correctly, another brand, so you, now, you're, now you're deriving physics in your head, which is pretty cool. You're telling me VF is a 2D over T, subtract the VI from it. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, and you'll notice I put the VF on the left side and I move this to the right, because we usually like the variable by itself on the left. That's what you guys are used to from math, right? X equals, VF equals. Is that on your formula sheet? I'm not gonna put it bother. I can, in two lines, derive. You can memorize that one too. Please don't. Have we got a formula, Spence? Yes. So we've done D, list our data. We've done F, find a formula. Insert the numbers. It's gonna be two times D12 over T3 minus, oh, wait a minute, what was VI? Zero. You know what, I probably actually could have canceled, I could have done that if I was really, really clever, but if VI wasn't zero, it turns out I would subtract it, but you know, I'll put a minus zero here just to be, but it's gonna be two times 12 divided by three, which maybe you can do in your head or on a calculator. Two times 12 is 24 divided by three, I think the answer is going to be 8. Why did I go 8.00? Three sig figs. And again, let me emphasize, Thomas, I will not take marks off for the rest of the year for sig figs. I gave you guys a test on that. But will I certainly be careful? Go, yeah. Have I gone over your unit one sig figs test yet with you guys? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. Now, other habits, not right or wrong, but good habits. Usually when I find an answer, I'll often put a box around it because can you see I've done a lot of work to get there. It helps me spot it easier later on, so I have a tendency to do that. That's the equivalent of my touchdown dance. Hey, got it. Put your pencils down. Look up. Uh, I also said to you that I could have used this. The nice thing about this one, VF is already by itself. What's VI for this question? Zero. What did we figure out A was? And really, it was 2.66666, right? What's T? This, before, if this was a test question, and I finished the test early, and I got some time to kill, I would calculate VF this way, and if I get the same answer as finding VF this way, I know part A must be right as well. Ooh. If I went zero plus, I know I don't need to go zero plus, but I'll just put it there for symmetry. 2.6666666666 times, what was time? That's a nice feeling to know, oh, you know what? I must, there, there's no way I could have used my acceleration and got the same answer as when I didn't use the acceleration. Unless they're both right. You're gonna find after a few weeks, you often have two or three different approaches. One will be uh, not using anything that uh, I had to calculate. You can use that, but there's often ways you can check your answers, Amy. Turn the page. Dolphins. Am I going to get through all of these? It's going to be close, I think, maybe. Dolphins. A dolphin accelerates from 1 meter per second to 7.6 meters per second in 5 seconds. Check. Find. Okay. What's part A want me to find? A equals question mark. Let's defic. Let's list our data. 
reading this question, I see a one. What's that one? Sorry? Oh, and you even gave me, because I got to, always kids, it's a velocity. Which one? But you said right away, VI, yeah. Uh, zero, Mr. Duick? One. What's that 7.6? Keep going, Noah. It's a distance, 7.6 meters. Is that what it says? What's that 7.6? Yeah. Ah! Do you see now why I'm saying it's worth memorizing what units go with it? It cuts down on a lot of mistakes, right? Keep going, Noah. What's that 5.5? Hint, look at the units. Huh? Nice. I'm looking for an equation, and you've all turned the page, so you're either going to look at your formula sheet or you're going to have to flip back a page. Look at your formula sheet. I'm looking for an equation. It has VF, VI, A, and T in it. There is one. Can you find it, Kyle? Which one? So you, you see what line we're looking at, right? The line right below, okay, with the four in a row, got it? Find the equation that's got a A, a VI, a VF, and a T. It can't have a D, because I don't have that. By the way, this is the main scale you want to pick up on, so I'm going to pound this into you, and I apologize, but ahead of time. So you know which line we're looking at? Okay, what's the first equation on that line? What's the first, read that one again? What's the first variable? Stop, do I have that here? What's the second variable? Stop, do I have that here? What's the third variable? A and T, do I have those here? But it, the equation has an A in it, which is what I'm trying to find? That's the equation. See how we figured that out? Read it to me again. Yep. Nice. Kyle, what did you say we're trying to find? Oh, actually, before I do that, are any of these zero? Are any of my values zero? No, it's always nice because stuff will vanish. But anyway, okay. Kyle, what are we trying to find? You answered that question. Not AT. What are we trying to find? A. Okay. See the A in the equation? Look up. Ding, 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 right here. What else is on this side? What letter, what variable? And VI. So to get the A by itself, we've got to deal with this. We've got to deal with this. Okay? First, we're going to move this over, Kyle. By the way, you're going to find we always do the dividing and timesing last. You do the adding and subtracting first, unless they're in brackets and junk like that. So you ready, Kyle? VI, what's the VI doing to this? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? How would I move it over? So if I hear you correctly, and I think I do, you're saying the VF would drop down like a domino. I would have a minus and a VI. Is that right? And then once you've written that down, put your pencils down. I'm going to write this. Kyle, what did you tell me you were trying to get by itself? What's also on this side? What's the T doing to the A? How would I move it over? Pick your pencils up. There's a new equation. I'm not going to bother writing that down. Sorry, I'm going to write it down here. I'm not going to bother memorizing it. Well done. OK, well done. Apparently, acceleration is also VF minus VI over T, which actually I sort of gave you guys a few days ago in a lesson, kind of unobtrusively. But for what it's worth, it all comes from this main one. Plug and chug now, Kyle. Ready? What's V final in this question, apparently? Yep. Minus. What's V initial in this question, apparently? All over. What's T in this question, apparently? I use decimals on purpose, because this one I can't do in my head. Now listen, on your calculator, is there more than one number on the top? You have to put the top in brackets. In other words, on your calculator, Spencer, and I want all of you to try this, because you need to figure out how your brackets work, you're going to have to do that. I will never handwrite that. I will just this once, but you're going to have to do that. 
you should get one point two. If you don't, you need to snag me later on in class and I need to show you how on your calculator brackets work. Or hopefully you're starting to clue in why I wanted my calculator rant as well because it sure is nice if you can clearly see the brackets like that. Some of your calculators, your cheaper ones, make you remember that you've put it in brackets. Ugh. Is it 1.2? Kyle? 1.2 what, Kyle? What did we just find? What were the units for acceleration? Who rem Come on, pen. Okay, my pen just stopped suddenly working. Hang on, bear with me. Come on, pen. Meters per second squared. Okay, there's A. Well done, sir. Feel a little nerdy pitter-pat in your heart. Since I did Kyle, why not Kyle? And since you were yawning, Kyle, what does B want me to find? Distance, you say? Uh, actually, Mr. Duick, first of all, why don't you write B in a little bracket. D equals question mark. Do I need to relist my data? No, I have it all there on the previous question. I'm not going to make you rewrite stuff. I'm not into that, Natalia. So I'm looking for an equation that has to have a D in it, because I'll, I'll try to find. And then uh, if it has VI, VF, and T, I can use an acceleration and a pinch that I've just calculated, but I'd prefer not to. Yep. You, if you had also said D equals V, I keep as a half AT squared, I would have accepted that, but I would have said, I'm using that A, although later on I could try that equation with the A, and if I get the same answer as here, then I know part A is right. Kind of cool. Okay. D equals... What's one half as a decimal? That's easier to type on your calculator. Or you could also divide by two, but in terms of number of keystrokes, 0.5 is less work than hitting divide by two. Bracket. Kyle, keep going. What's VI? Plus. Close bracket. Now, on your calculator, you'll probably need to insert a time sign there, although maybe not if you have a good calculator. So, for example, on mine, I can go 0.5 bracket, 1 plus 7.6, close bracket, 5.5. My calculator knows that between a bracket and a number means times. Yours might not. Again, as I've said already, Justin, you need to try this on your calculator and figure out how brackets work, right? Do you get 23.65? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, how many sig figs should I go to? Two. So I'm going to write like this. This is my fallback. I'm going to go D equals 23.65. But if I go to two sig figs, what am I going to write? 24 units, meters. Meters. We'll finish this one. We'll press pause. I'll give you 10 more minutes to work on the take-home quiz, and we're going to continue with this next class. Well, let's see. Um, yeah, you know what? Actually, I'm going to pause here.